Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you for being here today. Phones are still open at 559-656-0317. Questions can be sent to questions at insurancehour.com. If you need help right away, grab your cell phone, dial pound 250, use the keyword insurance, and you will be transferred to somebody that can help you right away. We've had a lot of information here today. If you've missed any part of this show, jump online, search for Insurance Hour. Easy to remember. You'll find us as a podcast on YouTube. Pretty much wherever you look, you'll find us there. And yes, you'll find us on good old social media. You can check there as well. But get the information that we're providing. It's good information. It's useful. No agenda here. And as I've said before, I'll say it again. If you find I've said something that is factually inaccurate, please call me out on it. And I don't mean that in a negative way. Send me an email. Give me a call. Say, hey, you said X, Y, and Z. And I believe it's A, B, and C. If it is something that's factual, please provide proof. And I will absolutely give you credit. Jump back on the next possibility that I can and make that correction. Because my goal is not to, you know, make myself seem like I know absolutely everything. My goal is to provide you with the most accurate and up-to-date information that I can. There's an old saying, and if you know who this is that made this quote, let me know. It is that stupid people think they know everything and smart people think they know nothing. Think about that. Anyway, for the break, we were talking about different types of ways to purchase insurance through an an independent broker, through a captive agent, or through an employee agent. One other way to purchase insurance is directly to the insurance company. That can come in many different ways. It could be you actually picking up the phone and calling an insurance carrier directly. It could mean you going online, filling out a form, purchasing a policy without ever talking to a person. Sometimes you could even do it through the mail. That's actually was the first direct to carrier way that was really taking off. You didn't have people making a lot of phone calls. You had lots of people that were purchasing insurance over over the mail. (laughs) They would get a solicitation that said, here's your price. And they would sign, attach a check, send it in. That's it. I would not think I'm going out on a limb to say that the level of coverage that people were getting compared to what they were thinking they were getting or they actually needed for sure was pretty low back then because all of that was being done in an automated system. And again, we're talking 30 some odd years ago. Systems weren't as good as they are today, right? You you could see a some type of in some type of computer system able to generate proposals based on a lot of data these days, 30 years ago, not so much. But that was one avenue that people could purchase insurance. It was through the mail. Or of course, they could pick up the phone and call. So that's another way you can purchase insurance. My opinion is you do whatever way works best for you. A lot of times agents and brokers will complain about the direct to consumer market. They would say, well, I don't understand. The insurance carrier is competing with me. I don't personally look at it that way because I think the type of consumer, the consumer that wants to have my advice or the advice of my staff, my counsel, if you will, is not going to be the same type of a consumer that will just go online, push a few buttons and buy a policy. It's a different buying habit, different buying pattern. There's a different mentality, a different way that people are looking at purchasing insurance, right? And I'm not saying that one is necessarily better than the other. Yes, I am. And you know, you could probably guess which one I'm biased toward, but I didn't. I'm biased, obviously, toward talking to an agent or broker because they are going to have more information than you do. Let's face it, they had to get licensed. Hopefully, they've been spending time in this for many, many, many years. They're going to know the ins and outs better than you will as a general consumer. That's just the way it works, right? That would be almost akin to you saying, well, I think I need an x-ray. And you would go get an x-ray. Well, no, that's not the way the medical system works. You have to go to a doctor. They have to examine you and they have to say, oh, you need an x-ray and they'll order an x-ray. Same idea. Insurance is complicated and it's getting more and more complicated as time goes by. That's one of the reasons I'm doing this program is I want to be able to be a resource for you to get information that you need without any type of slant, without any type of spin, without any type of bias. I just want to give you information. So remember, call them with your questions, 559-656-0317. If you cannot get through, if you get voicemail, that usually means that our phones are busy, which is good, yippee. Just leave a voicemail, let me know, let let the voicemail system know, hey, here's my question, it's okay to read it on the air, or here's my question, I don't want my voice on the air, just answer the question and we will do it. You can also send an email to questions at insurancehour.com. 
And you can even text the phone number, text 559-656-0317. Just text us your question. And again, let us know if you want to be recognized personally or you just want the question answered on the air, whatever you want, that's what we're going to do. I digress. We've talked about insurance policies. We've talked about the history. We've talked about how to purchase it. But what about claims? We pay our insurance premium, but what about claims? Do insurance carriers keep up their end of the bargain? Do they keep up and make that claim payment when the time comes? It's a big question. I thought it would be interesting to go over some of the largest events that insurance carriers have had to pay for. In no particular order, there were the 9-11 attacks in the United States. There was over $40 billion in claims. That, those are $2,001, mind you. Hurricane Katrina in 2005, about $41 billion in claims were paid out. There was the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami in Japan in 2011. That was over $35 billion. There was Hurricane Sandy in 2012 with around $30 billion in losses paid out. There were California wildfires in 2017 and 2018 that had over $20 billion paid out. Hurricane Harvey in 2017, about $20 billion paid out. Hurricane Maria, also 2017, rough year for hurricanes, $30 billion. Who can forget the Northridge earthquake in 1994? Now, this was a long time ago, and even back then, $20 billion was paid out. And of course, who can, who can, little, try that again. Who can forget what's most recent? We have good old pandemic in 2020 where they're saying, and they can't even put an exact number on it based on my research, hundreds of billions of dollars were paid out by the industry. So yes, insurance carriers do step up and do pay claims. Are there times that they don't? Because of course, they're not just there for these massive losses. They're there for smaller losses, much smaller losses, that we might have everything from a car accident to a slip and fall liability claim to insuring a restaurant for having liquor liability. All of those things insurance carriers have to do. We're going to talk a little bit about insurance claims, how they're filed, how you deal with them, when you think it's time to take it to the next level, and what to do if you feel like you're not getting your claim handled in the way that you want it to get handled. Because let's face it, nah, yeah, I'll tell you now. No, I'll make you wait. I'll tell you now. No, I'll make you wait. I'll make you wait to come back after the break, and I'll give you my famous quote about insurance claims. You will never forget it, and it is extremely useful, I promise you. We'll get that right after the break. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. We are here, and we will be back in a flash. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please be sure to like and subscribe for more content. And don't forget, click here to watch the next video. This show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa.